Is it better to do cardio or reduce calories for fat loss on today's episode of Science with Steve? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today I got my man Steven Bogrand. What's up everybody? Been a minute. This is Science with Steven. Uh, Steven is going to help us break down some of the research that we found out about. Uh, a nice study that actually talks about is it better to move to create a caloric deficit or is it better to restrict calories to create a caloric deficit. So Stephen, why don't you give us the idea of the study and what, what, what it looked like? Absolutely. So this is one of those studies that I like because it kind of reinforces a lot of things that we talk about in general and things that we know are good for exercise. Spoiler alert. Um, so this study ended up having four different groups. It had, of course, a control group. It had a group that exercised and did not lose weight, uh, which means that they would have eaten more on their calories while they exercised uh, doing cardio. They had a group that was in a deficit and losing weight due to diet only, and a group that was losing weight due to exercise only. So the diet only would be eating less food, and then the exercise only group would be eating the same amount of food, but exercising instead to burn those calories and create that deficit. Yeah, and I think the reason I like this study and the reason it's interesting is because you hear this argument all the time. All the time. Why do you do cardio? Why do you exercise? You could just eat less. And I think as someone who's A, an athlete, B, a, a physique competitor, um, and C, someone that just likes to move more, I've always kind of misunderstood this argument because there is a limit to how much less you can eat. There's very little <laughs> limit to how much more you can move throughout the day. Well, I think there's also a lot of really good arguments for why movement is good for general health, cardiovascular health, yeah. digestive, and just as all the things in terms of human health consequences as well yeah. that we've known for a very long time. Um, so even within that, we know that health-wise, yeah. movement is very good for us as human beings. Yeah, and I think, you know, I've done a lot of videos on walking and incline walking, and my treadmill literally resides right here in my office for that reason. I use it at least once a day, sometimes multiple times. Um, and it's been a game changer for me because I was primarily a sedentary person who would go to the gym and kick ass for 90 minutes and thought that that was gonna get me to the result that I wanted. It wasn't really until I started figuring out this idea of movement and now that we have fitness trackers, yep. now that we, we are aware that you know daily steps are a thing, Sometimes you don't realize how little we move when we drive to work, sit at work, drive home, sit at home, and you don't realize because we're not in a position where we need to walk on a daily basis for many of us. So the study was interesting because they actually had them walking, correct? Correct, they had them walking. Uh, for the exercise-induced weight loss group, they were doing roughly an hour a day at roughly 80% of their heart, max heart rate, so walking and or jogging, depending on the individual. And all the studies in this group were obese. So it was men and they were all over, overweight to the point where they would be considered obese by BMI standards. Yeah, and the thing I like about this is they said they burned about 700 calories in a session, which to me indicates that they burned a lot of calories. So what they would do is they would either have a group that would burn the 700 calories and let that be their deficit, or they would have the other group that would eat 700 less calories to kind of create the same deficit. So what's interesting is you would think it would be the exact same result, right? As a person that you know knows what we know, we go, well, you're creating a deficit. But there was actually some interesting results in regards to fat loss and also lean body mass. So explain that. Yeah, and so even though um, the results were different, the group that exercised as opposed to the group that dieted lost a higher percentage of body fat by roughly 1% extra body fat, and they lost roughly two pounds less lean body mass or muscle tissue, which for anybody who cares about the physique is extremely important because half the battle is keeping muscle while we diet yeah. and building muscle um, when we're not. So anything that we can do that helps with retaining our muscle mass, especially as maybe a possible physique competitor, yeah. is going to be pivotally important to our success in the process. Yeah, and I think the thing that makes me think is, okay, so not only did they lose body fat, they lost less muscle, so the other group might be feeling pretty good because they lost some weight, but when you lose muscle, you, that's actually metabolically demanding, so now you're actually lowering your metabolic rate. So I would suspect over time that the group that was just dieting on restricting calories would actually have a faster ad adaptation to their metabolisms. You would expect that for sure, but we also did see some other adaptations as well in the exercise only group, showing that essentially they had uh, less abdominal body fat, so their body fat was more evenly distributed, less visceral body fat, which we typically see is associated with some health concerns. Um, and just in general, what we saw in this study is that that simple activity of 
being more active, getting more steps, getting yeah. more exercise was better overall in health and better overall for the physique related measurements as well. Yeah, so in terms of this study, what it kind of showed, at least you know, in our opinions, is that if you're going to create a deficit using only one method, it would be better if you kept your calories the same and used activity to create that deficit. However, as coaches, <laughs> our approach is not looking at a study. Our approach is looking at the overall picture and our recommendations are gonna follow suit. Of course, so like we know that resistance training is obviously going to also keep more muscle while you diet because it forces that adaptation. So we're gonna have resistance training along with that. We also try to keep calories higher as much as possible yeah. because not only is it possibly not as productive as maybe exercise or moving more, but we also know that there's a psychological game and people have to be able to manage these things yeah. as well. You have to be able to manage that diet um, as well as other health concerns that can come when you maybe take dietary fats or carbohydrates too low. Yeah, and so for this reason, when we're making adjustments as coaches, we're not just saying, well, this study says we should just move more and have them do more and more cardio or more and more activity. We'll actually adjust both the nutrition and the activity to try to make sure we're in an optimal range for nutrition to keep and build muscle throughout a dieting process and also keep the person's sanity. While I love movement, I also love caloric restriction. They're both valuable tools, but I thought this study was some excellent insight into the idea that we can just sit around all day and eat less and be successful. I think that is a very limited thought. Absolutely. And I think it's also one of those things that different approaches are gonna be necessary for different individuals. Yeah, yeah. You may be very busy, you have kids, as opposed to where, yes, I still work from home, but I don't have kids, I don't have the same responsibilities. So the amount of time that I can probably give to physical activity throughout my week is a little bit higher than maybe what you have available to give. Therefore, a difference in approach may be necessary based on our specific lifestyles and considerations as well. Yeah, I think your jujitsu was <laughs> helping you get lean last year and I'm not going to jujitsu school. That's why I have a damn treadmill in my office. <laughs> but you see guys, the point here is that you've gotta look at the whole picture. You've gotta look at your daily activity. You gotta look at your caloric intake. Ultimately, fat loss comes down to creating a caloric deficit. How you do that is gonna determine your success, both not even in the diet, but in the long-term approach after that. And that's why we have our 90-day transformation challenge that is going to be kicking off. The entries end on January 23rd. We're giving away $50,000 cash. We're providing programs for nutrition, programs for training that are individualized. It's open worldwide. And we're gonna be providing questions and answers within the group. We also, for the first time ever, have an option for guided coaching. It's not a requirement, but we do wanna provide you guys the best possible service to reach your goals, maintain it, and have some tools to reach the goals that you want for the rest of your life. Yeah, and it's really exciting this year because with the guided coaching, I feel like a lot of people that needed that extra hand yeah. have a little bit more realistic ability to get that, even yeah. though um, we put out so much information. Sometimes you just need a yeah. little bit extra and it's just giving people that opportunity, which is really cool. Yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. We're gonna do another Science with Steve real soon. Comment below if you enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.